Today we discuss framing versus cropping later. Now I actually recorded a really long video, but I decided to give you half because I wanna see if you guys like the video. Hit like, comment, engage, and then we can release part two because it was a really long lesson, so I decided to kind of cut it in half. So you might as well just hit like now. I mean, <laughs> you're gonna like it. Hey guys, I'm in a little box. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Today, I figured we would look at the photographs that you sent in. Thank you everyone who submitted. We got over like 250 photographs in 10 minutes or something like that, which was great because um, you didn't know what we were gonna do with the photographs. So thank you to everyone who submitted. And if you didn't get to submit, we'll do more of these. We're gonna be doing a little bit of a, you know, following along on our intermediate photography uh, tutorials and I'll link my other intermediate photography tutorials and the goal of these tutorials is to help people who already know how to use their cameras to sort of get to the next level thinking about making good photographs and um, just the process of creating photographs and as I went through all your photographs I could see all kinds of levels people who are expert to very beginner and um, just know I didn't get to every photo. I picked ones that will match with what we're talking about today. They line up with our goal. And our goal is to talk about cropping and composition, how those two go hand in hand. Now we're gonna talk about this because you can, you know, line up a photograph and use your compositional skills to get everything correctly in the frame. That's composition. How do the elements in the photograph work together to make a photograph. And the other thing is when you come back, you can actually, you know, manipulate your photograph to get different compositions. So one is done in frame and in camera, and some of you did a great job with that. You could tell that some people thought of composition. And other photographs, it happens to me all the time, I come back in and they could be made stronger by changing the crop. All right, so let's look at a couple of my photographs and then we'll look at yours. <laughs> we are in Lightroom and if you hit the R key, that will give us the crop tool. And if you hit the O key, you get a, a variety of crop overlays. Okay, now the one that's default is this uh, rule of thirds here. Now this guy looks like the rule of thirds, but it's not. This is called the golden composition golden something. <laughs> I ain't good with names. Okay, now this overlay is called the golden ratio, and it looks like the rule of thirds, but it's not. The center is a little bit more crunched, and it turns out that the golden ratio, turn, you know, there's two of them. If I hit the O key again, you get the golden spiral ratio, and if I hit the shift and O, it will spin it around. Uh, but this, this overlay, this um, golden ratio, actually exists in nature, like, you know, uh, seashells and the Mona Lisa's even this, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's a good one to kind of put on your photograph and see if a photograph you like has it. And if you notice this right here, this dock is on this lower rule here um, and these guys go through the top. So in my mind, it kind of, you know, that this overlay works for this photograph. Now changing your composition and changing your crop go hand in hand sometimes to change the story. So here my kids were looking in the reflection and this was the shot that I got, you know, and, and here it tells a story. You can actually see my son and you see him in the reflection and you can kind of see two of my daughters over there. Uh, but watch, if I change the um, composition to not show my son, that also gives you a very interesting photograph, you know, something that will make the viewer think maybe for a second, like what's going on here? So sometimes cropping out information will change the, the whole story in the photograph. No, one of the rules is usually don't crop heads out, but you know, sometimes it, it, you don't need the head in the story. Here you can tell it's a baby with a book. You don't need the head. There's enough cute information here like them toes. <laughs> I use cropping a lot. Uh, because when I shoot events, a lot of times the, what I'm trying to grab is a little further away than I like. So whatever lens I have, I happen to have on my camera, sometimes something happens that's a little further away. So cropping for, you know, getting rid of dead space is something that you're gonna see us doing in this video. 
if there's too much sky or if there's too much sand or if there's too much grass, sometimes it takes away with what's, you know, what's going on. So here what I usually like to do is sometimes you have to go in just a little bit to get rid of, uh, you know, the, the things that aren't too interesting on the outside. Now in this street photograph, I lined up the composition beforehand and let the subject come into my composition. Now <laughs> I got a little bit nervous because I really would have loved to have him be just about right here. And I think the, the photograph would have been a little bit more balanced. He's a little close to the edge. And that's something else you'll see in this video is we're gonna have photographs where people are too close to the edge. You wanna give your subject a little bit of room on one side. And sometimes you wanna give your subject equidistant in the frame, okay? So in this case, my photograph, I wish this person was a little bit further into the story. Now here's an example of uh, there being a lot of dead space. And something else we'll see in this video and I'll talk about is think about alternative crops. You know, because we have different aspect ratios that are available to us. Our camera shoot in four six, unless you have a micro four thirds that obviously shoots in four three or a square crop camera. So all of us with different cameras or different systems may have different crops coming out right out of camera. And so for, for example, you have to open up your mind to other aspect ratios. For example, this photograph, and I've been experimenting with this a little bit more, um, is a widescreen 16.9, putting your subject in 16.9, rule of thirds and having a wider image is one alternative. By the way, those of, you, those of you that are very beginner, this is called like a bullseye composition right here. And some of you did submit photographs with bullseye composition. That means your subjects are totally straight dead in the middle. It just, it's just like a general rule that you shouldn't put your subject in the middle because your viewer doesn't get to kind of explore the photograph. And even like medieval painters and uh, painters from the, the Renaissance, they all knew this, that they would put things in the thirds or in you know some kind of uh, place where the person explores the whole photograph. Putting it dead in the middle doesn't really do the photograph any favors. So I'm gonna stick this uh, last little ducky right there on the rule of third. And we could either put the rule of the duckies here or the duckies somewhere else. Sorry, we <laughs> I wasn't even thinking when I was talking there. We could put the duckies on this side or we could put the duckies on this side. So which third do you pick? And since they're looking in this direction, this is probably the better third. You kind of want them looking out into the water so this is where we wanna put them, okay? And do we wanna put them at the bottom of the photo? See, there's too much room at the top. And again, this could be cropping or this could be a beginner sort of framing things up in camera. So that's why they go hand in hand. Anytime I'm talking cropping, I'm also to talking composition in camera. So we wanna move our camera maybe here and we could put the duckies in this rule of thirds, okay? Okay, this little motorcycle, I love these motorcycles. These are called Groms. Look how cool this little thing is. Oh my gosh, so fun. Honda Grom. Uh, but you could crop out, again, distracting elements from your photographs. This is about as close as I could get to the, the motorcyclist. Um, but going around the corner, there's two other subjects and something else going on where I really think the photograph is about the motorcyclist here. So let's look at a couple of things you can do. So for example, let's go old school Instagram. <laughs> if we go one, one here, then I would put the bike in the rule of thirds. You see that? And then here we have a little bit of balance. Now that pole in the background is sort of messing with us. So that doesn't really work for me so much. So let's go five by seven vertical. And now that works a little bit better because the pole is kind of not really on the rule of thirds but that's something else you can do. You could do a vertical crop. Let's stick to horizontal or landscape croc. Croc, that's a crocka. Boop. Oh, we can go with headless cyclist. <laughs> and come on, come on. Okay, again, our inclination as beginners is to put him in the center. We don't wanna put him in the center. So we want rule of thirds. And remember, do we want him here? No. We want to give him space because he's about to take off. So I'm gonna crop out the distraction on the left, that dude, 
and I'm gonna kind of, as best as I can, keep him in the rule of thirds. Now, I don't mind going around the corner there too much. That doesn't bother me. And so this is a better crop, I think. Okay, I think. Okay, so check this out. This was shooting at Golden Hour, Sunset, Factory Building, New Jersey. So the first image was just an overall shot where you could see down the street, you could see the pole, and you could see this little puddle. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. However, it just wasn't working for me because the puddle had the interest, the reflection in the puddle. So this is where I had a prime lens on and I moved my body to get a little lower to get a different composition. So this is composition number two. I was liking what was happening in the puddle by moving my camera down, but I lost something. I lost the pole, I lost the street. This, by the way, is a decent photograph. I could totally work with this. But I then moved my camera a little bit more, just a little bit more, and I got down the street. So now someone can explore this photograph. They can look in the puddle, they can look down the street, maybe look at the pole, see building, and they're done with it. I wanna start with a couple of photographs that to me, I felt that were like completely finished, that the composition worked really great, either with crop or the person thought of it in camera. So this one right here to me works uh, really great. Like this one, you know, the horses on the top are in this general rule of thirds. And to me, this composition worked. The image was done. Beautiful. This one as well, the person put their subject in the rule of thirds. So the person is here. And this, the only thing that you can do maybe a little different here is if you were starting to explore with the, um, the 16, nine crop that we talked about a second ago. You know, if the person was really, you know, so widescreen crop. But other than that, the image to me was composed well. Again, a wide scene of a landscape or some kind of cityscape. I love cityscapes like this. This is really cool. Uh, pretty much done. The composition is really good. And I'm gonna put some overlays there so we could see which ones work. Oh, it's the scolding spiral, people. <laughs> Now that's what happens as a photograph. We're, we're all kind of artists in our own minds here. And you don't sit there with your camera and you're like, golden ratio would work here. This photographer saw the lines, lined up the photograph and it worked, okay? So um, take all this like golden rule and all this rule of thirds and all this line stuff with a grain of salt. Just know that as you get better as a photograph, you can line up, back up and move around to get what you like. So I felt that this photograph was done. This one as well, oh, I love the square crop. Your eyes wanna explore this photograph. So it has really good composition. Um, there's stuff going on at the top. There's a little cityscape at the bottom. Sorry, there's a little cityscape at the top and there's a little street scene at the bottom with people and good light. Uh, by the way, I'm not, this ain't an editing course or nothing, but uh, you could always cheat and go like this with a little gradient, just as a little hint, you know, as a little gradient. It's a little dark down there is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, check this out. This lines up really nice and this would be a beautiful photograph in a gallery. Square crop, don't be af afraid of the square crop at all. Love it. This one also I thought was great. Um, you know, one thing I found was interesting here, the person put it on a white border, and I don't know if that made the photograph better, but it, it sort of balanced out the photograph to me, you know, like kind of like a Polaroid, looking at a Polaroid. But the composition here is great. Um, if we do any overlays that might work. Oh, this rule of thirds kind of works. And um, the rule of, f f you know what? That kind of works. <laughs> Pretending I'm an expert here. This photograph worked for me. Like I saw it and I was like, that's a great composition, done. This one worked for me, I don't know why. They're all in the center, but somehow the image is balanced well. It's like old people with ice cream. Uh, I just like this picture, I don't know. Some of them I put, you know, my, some of them I just picked because they were like pictures I liked. Oh. This to me, this image is completely done. The composition is great, it has lines. Again, I don't know the actual thing that makes it work. Looks like rule of thirds works with this pole. Um, other overlays, not diagonal. This guy I think works if we, no, maybe not. Maybe not, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. 
Maybe it's the golden one, but somehow I know this guy works. And that is the thing that you start to do as a photographer is you just line it up and you know, but I love this photograph. <laughs> Any photo with Spidey is getting through people. That's just a hint there. Uh, I love this just for that little splash of red. And when you think, I think the only, and this is cool that this is like a web. Oh my God, there's so many levels in this. <laughs> I would say the only thing is that maybe it was twisted slightly. Um, I don't know if, see right here, Spidey and the rule of third. I wonder if we could get Spidey in the, like the awesome rule of third there. I don't know, I might be making it worse. Did I make it worse? Probably. Yeah, there might be a little too much shadow at the bottom, but um, you see what I'm saying? Like getting the Spidey closer to this little spot might be nicer, but I think that's great. That little dot of red with the web and the, damn. Gosh, you hate people that take photos like this, don't you? <laughs> okay, so this one, I used to do this one when, when I was a beginner too. I always loved like, hey, the sky looks great. Let me take a picture of it. Uh, but what you, what you didn't realize was you had a cool subject on the right that maybe you could have included more. So I just want to say maybe you can maybe maybe you can frame it, but there was something on the way. But just to recrop or try to save this photo, <laughs> it's crazy. We got rid of the whole sky. Uh, but let's auto. Let's auto and see what it does. But you know, I went to a photo critique once, and the person that was a judge. I wasn't in the critique, but the judge was giving us a little behind the scenes and he said that anything that was a sunset got passed along by the judges. Like any sunset picture, it's just been so overdone that if you have a sunset picture, it better have some kind of subject that really is very interesting in order to move on uh, through the contest. So. so this is one where all this stuff over here we don't really need. So there's a couple of cool compositions you can do here. So the first one is keep the bird in the rule of thirds. Keep the bird in the rule of thirds. So let's go like this, bam, put them up here in the rule of thirds. Cool beans, right? So that gives you less of that there. The other thing we could do with this one is go with the widescreen 16.9 and have the bird be there. See, so it's a little bit more, since there's you know a little gobo, little shadow shapes going on, it's just a little splash of yellow, which is really cool. I like that. And if all the stuff was boring or blue sky, you could always do yay, make a bookmark. <laughs> this, I love this photograph. I just wish there was a little more information, like the mountain being finished and the people's campsite just being finished. But probably this telephoto, oh. but it probably was a case where the lens didn't, you know, work out with the composition, but just a little more info on either sides because the two things of interest are too close to the edge, in my opinion. This is a very busy photograph and the person is a bullseye composition. So if your subject is here, we don't need backpack lady. Uh, we always go with the coffee people, always go with the coffee. <laughs> so here's a couple of things you could do. So. Um, Let's see, we could put them in a third, you see, and straighten this out just a tad. If you're going with a square square crop, you can put them in a third. So there's like stuff, and then we get to him. Uh, it would have been great also if this person wasn't growing out of his shoulder, you really couldn't control that. And the other thing you could do is you can go for six, and we could put them kind of in a third there so that we have our coffees and he's sort of at the end. So this also will give you a little bit more interest as opposed to just putting him in the middle. This is really cool. I love this photograph. That's why I picked it. So the only thing is that the person with the umbrella is a little bit too far off already. So I would just put them a little bit more in the thirds. A couple of ways you can do it. Like for example, I feel that this stuff over here, you see how that there's, you know, the, the vignetting of the lens and the wideness of the lens is ruining the corners. You could, one thing you could do is get rid of the corners. So put them perfectly in a third. And if you had to, you could get rid of the vignetting also. We could just go like this and, you know, let's just pretend we're getting rid of the vignetting. So that's one thing you could do. I think I ruined the picture. <laughs> the other thing you could do is the 16.9, which would be a cool wide, you know, composition. Imagine this right here. Yo, 
Yo, let's hit the A key to really go wide. That's too crazy. That's too crazy. But we can do something like this. Rule of thirds wide where the person is walking. So, um, damn, I like that. I like that. The only thing that's tough with this photograph is that the bricks don't have a perfect pattern. So that because of the, the distortion of the lens, we kind of lose something. The person may be distracted with the upper right because of the crop, okay? This to me, the composition was great. Foreground element, mid and distant. We always want those layers and this composition works. Same with here, foreground element, mid, rear, environmental. Um, that's a cool picture. Here, I love this, the eyes close up, a head close up. This, There's so much going on in this photograph, I love it. The only thing that maybe I would do is there's just too much up here. But again, I don't know. Let me check it. Let me check, check. I'm gonna go with this. So I kind of like that a little bit. Uh, too much white at the top. So just think about that. Let's see if this works as a square crop. This is just me playing now. Bam, we lose the kid with the hair, yo. But let's see if we go tight. It changes the story a little bit. I think the wider works better. I love this picture. That's why I picked it. But then I was thinking about it and I was like, gosh, the top is amazing. And the bottom is just too much floor, maybe? Let's hit auto here, see what Lightroom does with a little bit of oomph, oomph. Sorry, I'm not editing your photo. I'm not. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna hit the A key to release the crop. And like my mind is saying the rule of third, at least floor wise, is to go through his chair, sort of like this. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing is to try to get that rule of thirds don't mess with the top because it's beautiful, but there was just way too much floor for me. Now, if you overdo, let's say if we were to put the rule of third kind of through and get a square crop, then that works too, but he's a little confined now. I felt like part of the picture's strength was that he was very tiny, uh, Steve Jobs here. Okay. Cool, horizon is completely straight. This is an example of too much sky and too much sand. And so you may start thinking about doing a wide um, to be a little bit more dramatic, you know, cinematic, wide, and get your subject close to a rule of third, boat on rule of third. We never wanna put our horizon though in the middle. That's like one of the rules, except if you go 16.9. If you go 16.9, you're about, there, you can totally do the, uh, where's my other golden, delicious, there it is. <laughs> so you can use the golden ratio to now use a little bit of widescreen, but I, I kinda am liking, I'm just going by my mind here. I'm sorta liking something dramatic like that. This was my favorite photograph that anyone submitted, I'm sorry, I just like love the, the feel, who, what took this? I know we're not supposed to ask. It says 19 millimeter. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it is a great picture. And um, the only thing is it's an interesting discussion on composition. And this is what happens when I'm shooting an event. Something awesome happens, I turn around, get the shot, and then later sort of try to make the photo. So let's see what we're gonna do here. So let's start with um, straightening the photo out. So what you should do is go to transform and just hit the level, boop, and Lightroom usually finds the horizon and will level it. Did it? Yeah, it did, boop. Okay, cool, that's number one. Number two is to decide what are we gonna do here. So this has a lot of water and a lot of sky, but the water is interesting and the sky is interesting. So I don't think that we would do what we did before, which is using our golden delicious, boop, putting the kid in a third, putting the kid in a third, putting the horizon here. And that's one composition that looks cinematic, looks movie-like and could work. Like if we put the both of them in a third, let's check that. Oh, <laughs> That's kind of cool, except the stupid panel borders over here. You know, I think bullseye works in this composition. I, I think bullseye works. And what do you guys think, man? We, you can't talk to me. You're not even there. I'm talking to myself. So I think that this guy is dramatic in itself. I think I would have just, let's reset it. And if I was taking care of it really quick, I would definitely level the horizon. And I would bring it in maybe, let's lock it. Maybe, 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 maybe. 
I kind of like the bullseye composition. Isn't that crazy? You're breaking all the rules. That's the fun thing about photography is there are no rules. And this composition works too. If you wanted to get rid of that stupid paddle, is, it, is that another paddle border? Oh, it's a buoy. <laughs> now, I got about like 10 cat pictures, guys. You know, I really am not gonna sit here and look at cats except for this cutie, oh my God. I like this, this was rule of third. You see the cat is kind of in the rule of third. The cat was given space. Uh, so this one worked for me, plus it's a cute cat. Give your subject space. These kids uh, don't have enough space at the top, so you have to be careful. Composition, pull back a little bit or zoom back. I thought this picture was cool. Guy going this way, guy walking the other way, and three birds following him. <laughs> uh, but again, a good, a good discussion on how much sky to have. You know, so for example, this might be an interesting one-on-one -on -one crop. Watch. Boom. So I think that now the balance in the photograph, large, uh, I wish we had a little bit more ground on the bottom, but that's one possibility, right? That's one possibility. Um, let's do a five by seven crop, not that way, this way. Boop. Five by seven, boop. Again, we don't want our subjects too close to the edges. So I think it's an eight by 10 crop aspect ratio and using the entire edges. That might be it. I think there was just too much sky in the photograph, but I like this photo. That looks like my dad, by the way. This guy looks exactly like my dad. Mm -hmm.